Hey, it's Cy Blackburn here, and today what I want to do is I want to talk to you about why the first version of your product and your program is going to suck, and really what you can do to avoid that as much as possible. So let's get started. Now, if you're a coach or a consultant, you've probably been sold on the idea that the per hour is not the way to go and that you need to package up your coaching. You need to create programs and packages which allow you to charge high ticket. And yes, it's great advice because charging by the hour at best will really get you to have mid five figures at the very most in terms of revenue. But Packaging up allows you to scale and it allows you to really bring in multiple six, multiple seven figures as a business. So from a business decision, it's a wise decision to make. Yet, why is it that most coaches that do this, they release their first program, they release their first product and it just doesn't work out. It's just not that good. Well, let me tell you that it happens to everybody in the industry. The first version of their program just isn't very good. And it's a hidden truth that nobody talks about, yet everybody I know has that same experience. And inevitably, what it leads to is a whole bunch of over-promising and under-delivering. And it's not really the fault of the coach, because it happens by design, it happens by default, and I'll tell you why. Now, with a product, with a program, what you're promising is not a process, it's an outcome. Right, so if you're a health and fitness coach, you may be promising a six pack by the end of summer. If you are a business coach, you may be promising more leads, more sales, more time by the end of the program itself. So it's always the outcome which you're promising. Now, if you're promising a certain type of outcome, and you're dealing with a variety of different clients and a variety of different life circumstances, the real problem comes up in terms of consistency, right? Actual consistency. How do you create consistency from one client to the next. And that's where the per hour model really kind of shines through because it allows you to kind of vary what you do to really help a client along their journey. But as a coach, it does not make sense in the long run to have that as the base model of your business. You have to create a package that consistently delivers results to your clients. And the reason why the first version is just inconsistent in terms of the results that it actually delivers is primarily a couple of reasons. Number one, the coach gets sold on the idea of building a membership site, like that's the way to go. Create an online course, create an online program and deliver it to 100 people at once. Now, yes, that is a good idea, but not as a first step, and here's why. When you create a program, what you're doing is using the best of your knowledge to really take the steps back along the journey that a client will go through to reach an end outcome. So if it's, you know, get a six pack by the beginning of summer, you may say, okay, step one is that you need to amend your sleep pattern. Step two, you need to make sure that your diet is in order. Step three, you need to make sure that really your fitness regime is in order. So all of these steps, you expect that each module is going to have those series of steps to reach that outcome. And what clients have a habit of doing, and any coach that's experienced will kind of be laughing here um, as well, is they have a habit of screwing things up. And here's how. So you say, all right, you're gonna do A, and the client does B. And you say, okay, you're gonna do X, and the client does B. The, the client ends up going right when you tell them to go left, he ends up going forward when you tell them to go backwards, and it becomes a nightmare to actually deliver the end result. Now the real question comes in is, can you create consistency on mass, right? Can you create a consistent set of people getting a result on scale? And this excludes the people that don't do the work, that you have no control over. But the ones that do, if they go through your program and go through it as it's designed, can they get that end outcome? So an interesting scenario for me. When I was 16 years old, I went to Tony Robbins, UPW, Unleash the Power Within, the Firewalk and all of that. When I was in my mid 30s, I also went to unleash the power within. And you know how much of it was actually the same in terms of the seminar? So anyone that's been to the Tony Robbins seminar will tell you this. It was actually like 90 to 95% of the seminar was identical. And we're talking like an over 15 year gap between me entering it. Now that's interesting, isn't it? Because he has run that seminar again and again and again, and the promise is a very consistent promise at the end, he has to get 10,000 people through that seminar and getting those outcomes. So how do you do that if you're just starting out 
packaging up creating your coaching product in terms of creating consistency among clients, regardless of their age, race, background. And to do that, it's a concept that I wanna introduce you and it's not really talked about a lot in the coaching world, but it's talked about a lot in the tech space, which is user testing. Now, how do you create a user testing environment with your clients when creating a program for the first time? So to deliver this consistently and get a consistent result with the client, you have to really work with the one-on-one, -on -one, right? Get a client to go through the program as it's designed manually. So no membership site, no automated video course or anything like that. Literally you, a once a week Zoom call, a once a week Q&A, and that is it. And what you'll find is when the first client goes through the program, let's say they're going through module one, they finished, you finished the training session, they're going from module one to module two. And in module two, you're expecting them to have this, that, and the other already prepared. Let's say you find out they come to it and they don't. You've got to, go to look into why did that client not do the work? Why did they you know, miss out on something very fundamental that you wanted them to do between module one and module two? And you will find that the client does a very specific set of things. So what happens is the next time you run the program, you've made amendments based on the first client. And right, the next one, it's still a manual process, Zoom calls and Q and A's. So this time you'll find they go through module one and module two, and they succeed the way that you want them to succeed between the two modules but they screw up between module three and module four. That then allows you to say, okay, you know what? I need to change this, that, and the other between those modules in order to eliminate the friction that my client is experiencing. So once you run five clients through this process, right? Manually going through the manual Zoom calls, the manual Q and A's, the manual email responses back and forth, you will have a set of data points which you would have amended on the product. Right, which will allow your coaching program to eliminate the friction between the modules. So that instead of going right, left, right, left, right, left, people go in a straight line to get the outcome that you've promised them in the program. At that point, you can start automating. At that point, you can put it on a membership site, put it on a video course, and you will find that that's the point where you get a Tony Robbins UPW-like experience that 10 years down the line, the product is still selling, still delivering, people are still raving about it, and it's by design. It wasn't that you were a great coach or not a great coach, it's that you eliminated the friction in the process of the product itself. And yes, it is work to do that, but the alternative is that you just launch product after product and you know, have to innovate every single time and not really create a business which allows it to scale. You're just creating a launch model, but not a scaling model. So I hope this was valuable for you and I hope this is gonna really recreate your mindset when it comes to creating products which are not just gonna sell once, but sell for the next 10 years. Right, my name's Cy Blackburn and I'm gonna see you in the next video. And that next video is gonna be specifically focused on how do you create coaching programs which clients absolutely love. And again, hint, it's not necessarily how good you are as a coach, but you can design happiness in the program. I'm gonna be talking about that in the next video.